not a single one was lost. Bless the name of the Lord. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise him, praise him. Give him all glory for your own life that he has kept you in good health and you are here again this month. Thank him for January. Thank him for February. Thank him for March. Thank him for April. Bless his holy name for May. Bless his holy name for June. Bless his holy name for July. Bless his holy name for August. And thank him for September. Give him glory, give him honor. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Amen. We give you all the glory. We give you Almighty God will give you all the glory. King of kings and Lord of lords will give you all the honor. Our God in ages past, our hope for years to come, we give you all adoration. Thank you for what you did for your church last month. Thank you for a very wonderful convention. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your support. Thank you for provision. Thank you for security. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for all manners of testimonies. And thank you even for the great testimonies we have had again tonight. Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, in your own very special way, Silence all our mockers. <laughs> Concerning your children here and your children listening all over the world, my Father and my God, tonight, concerning all our mockers, 
Father, do a quick work. Even before this night is over, my Father and my God, show all our mockers that you are the Almighty. Thank you for everything, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Now, September is the beginning of the new year for the Redeemed Christian Church of God. So shake hands with two or three people and say, Happy New Year, brother. Happy New Year, sister. And then you may be seated. Uh, except those born in the month of September. If you are born in September, then stand on your feet. My Father, my God, I want to thank you for your children born in the month of September. September is the ninth month of the year, and nine is three times three. In the lives of all these your children, from now on, let their miracles be in triples. Let their testimonies be in triples. Give them triple promotion. Bless them beyond measure. And let them serve you like never before. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Children of September, shout a big hallelujah. Please be seated. Uh, next month, by the grace of God, is our youth convention. And so they, they have the whole of the first week of next month to themselves. And the theme is Stronger Than Your Enemies, Part 9 with the subtitle Indomitable. Indomitable means someone you just cannot conquer. That's the theme for next month. And make sure you are here. It's going to be a very glorious time indeed. Now I said youth convention, that means it's meant for the youth. The elders are welcome to participate, but the youth are all those people who are younger than I, and since I'm 76, if you are younger than 76, you are a youth, so let the youth shout hallelujah. <laughs> and if you are older than 76, you are an elder. So let the elders say amen. Uh, they, are <laughs> they are still there. God will be with our elders. Our text tonight, as we discuss Stronger Than Your Enemies, Part 8, with the subtitle Silencing Mockers, our text is found in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 1 to 10. 1 Samuel chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. And while you are opening your Bibles, I think we should give the Lord a big, big hand for that first lecture. Thank God for a daughter of Zion. That was a beautiful, beautiful sermon. When you, after you've listened to such a sermon, you wonder what can this pastor say? God will have to help me tonight. 
That was good. That was good. That was really, really good. Praise the Lord. First Samuel chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There's none holy as the Lord, for there's none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bowls of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are guarded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren has born seven. I want to say amen to that. And she that hath many children is wax feeble. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and he bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillar of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the word upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces, out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. Ah. This is going to be a night you will never forget. But before we proceed to the miracle section of tonight, as usual, I want to talk to those who might be here who are not yet born again, who are not yet children of God. You see, mockers always end badly. Those who love to mock God or mock the things of God, they always end badly. In Luke chapter 17, verse 26 to 27, Luke 17, 26 to 27, the Lord Jesus Christ said that as it was in the day of Noah, People were eating, they were drinking, they were getting married, they were given a marriage until the flood came and destroyed them all. When Noah was preparing the ark that would have brought salvation to the people, they laughed at him. What's wrong with this old man building a huge boat saying a flood is coming? What flood? Because at that time, there had never been rain. Where will the flood come from? They mocked him. They laughed at him. 
As I'm sure you, you know, some people are still mocking today, still laughing. When they hear a word of prophecy, they thought it's a joke. I mean, I told you at the beginning of the year <laughs> that the Lord said, get ready for floods. How many of you will remember? And now, and now you, are, you are hearing of floods in places where if they get two, three rains in the year, they used to rejoice. Now, floods. And <laughs> let me give you a hint. It's not over yet. They mocked Noah. Old man, if we have nothing else to do, don't bother us. Keep on building your toy. And then, the day of decision came. Noah, his family, animals, birds, enter into the ark. And the Bible said, God shut the door. And then, the rain began to fall. By the time they came knocking at the door, Noah opened unto us, Noah said, I'm sorry, the key had been taken away. And then in the same Luke chapter 17, verse 28 to 30, Luke 17 from verse 28 to 30, the Lord said, as in the day of Lot, again, they were eating, they were drinking, they were selling, they were planting, they were building. And when Lot went to tell his in-laws, ah, I've heard that destruction is coming. I have some visitors, they've told me destruction is at the door. Come, let's run for our lives. They laughed at him. They laughed at him. By the following day, they weren't laughing anymore when the fire began to fall. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 21 to 29, Exodus 12, verse 21 to 29, Moses said to the people, Trouble is coming. The angel of death is around the corner. Every one of you, kill a lamb. Mark your doorposts with the blood of the lamb. Because when the angel comes by, wherever he sees the blood, he will pass the place over. Do you know there are people who said, <laughs> blood, blood of an animal over my post, angel of death. When the night came and the angel of death was passing by, every house, doesn't matter who was there, whether Jew or not, where he didn't see the blood. He went in and killed. In Numbers 21, from verse 5 to 9, Numbers 21, 5 to 9, the children of Israel murmured against God, said to Moses, what kind of life is this? All we get for food is this manna. Every day, manna, manna. Manna in the morning, manna in the afternoon, manna in the evening. And God said, all right. If you are so ungrateful, 
Let's give you a little taste of judgment. And then this serpent came. When they beat, they, it is like fire. Suddenly the people cried. Oh, we are sorry. We have sinned. And God spoke to Moses. All right, make a serpent. Looking like that particular fiery serpent. Raise it up. Tell the children of Israel, anyone beaten by this serpent, all they need to do is look up at the brass serpent you have lifted, lifted up and they'll be made whole. Do you know some people still mocked? We are talking of snake bite. You are talking of looking up to one brass serpent up there. As many as did not look up, died. And Jesus referred to this situation in John chapter 3, verse 14 to 18. John 3, 14 to 18. He said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. You look up to him and you'll be saved. Don't mock the call to salvation. Don't say, what are we, what are they talking about? Born again, born again. We've seen so many of them born again around us. Nobody is asking you to look at any man. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Don't joke with sin. Sin is a killer. The wages of sin is death. The Lord is calling on those of you who up to now have been toying with the issue of salvation. Mockers always end badly. You need to run away from sin and come to the Savior. Don't believe those who tell you that all will be well with you if you continue in sin. No such thing. You cannot continue in sin and expect grace to abound. God forbid. That is what the word of God says. You cannot claim to be a born again child of God and continue to live a life of sin it is not done. It's not. The Bible says when you are in Christ, you are a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. Don't tell me that you are born again and you still continue to lie. You still continue to cheat. You still continue to fornicate. There's no born again fornicator, no born again adulterer. If you are born again, you are new. What you used to do, you can do them no more. If you are born of God, you don't commit sin. Because the seed of God will be in you. The seed of the Holy One of Israel will be in you. When I got born again, everything changed. 
I couldn't even tell a white lie. I couldn't do anything contrary to the will of God because there was someone living in me that tells me you can't do it. I told you at that time I got born again, I was a lecturer at the University of Lagos. And there were official envelopes. And I wrote a personal letter. And because of my position in the department, I had envelopes available to me. I wanted to take one of the envelopes to post my letter. And the Spirit of God said, you know, these envelopes are for official letters, not private ones. And my hand froze. That's salvation. That's what we're talking about. And I said to my daddy, how much is an envelope? And he said to me, son, if it is that cheap, go and buy your own. Don't tell me you're a Christian and you lie and God allows you to get away with it. Who is deceiving who? Don't tell me you're born again and you can see cheat. It doesn't happen. Don't tell me you're born again and you, you are still keeping all those boyfriends, girlfriends, still doing things contrary to the will of God. It doesn't happen if you are born of God. The seed comes in you and things become brand new. So those of you who are here tonight and you know <laughs> you have not experienced genuine salvation because God is going to silence mockers tonight and before the fire begins to fall he will separate those who are his own from those who are not. If you have not been born again, if you have not felt great sorrow for your sin, because repentance really means I acknowledge my sin, I'm sad for them, I'm made up my mind never again to go back into them. That's repentance. Let me tell you, my brother and sister, no salvation without repentance. So if you are here tonight and you have not given your life to Jesus, or you claim you have given your life to Jesus Christ, but he didn't change you, you better come now. Come and surrender your life to Jesus. Come and cry to him to please forgive all the evil you have done in the past and give you a brand new beginning. Come and cry to him to save your soul that his blood will wash you clean, that his blood will bring you into the family of God. I will count from one to 10. Before I say 10, come and stand before me I will pray for your salvation and then we can proceed from there. I'm counting now. One. And those of you in the old arena, just go towards the altar. There are people there who attend to you and my prayer we reach you when it is time to pray. Two.
must come with the determination. I'm saying bye-bye to a life of sin. I want to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. I want to become a child of the living God. I want people to see me and see Christ in me. Three. You must only come if you are sorry for your sins and you want to repent. You want to say no more, no more, no more. Lord, just have mercy on me. Forgive the sins of the past. And give me a new beginning. Five. Thank you, those of you who are clapping. Clap as if you are born again. Because the word says, whatever your hands find to do, you do it with all your might. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Cry unto him. Those of you are already in front and those of you are coming. Cry unto him and say, Lord, please save my soul. Forgive all my sins. Change me completely from inside out. Don't let me ever go back into sin. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. Cry unto him. Cry unto him. And the rest of us, please, let's stretch our hands towards our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also let's pray for them brethren intercede for them let's cry unto god for them and say that every one of them will get genuine salvation tonight that they will be saved saved thoroughly that everything will become new for them that they will not be able to go back to their way of sin after tonight please intercede for them pray brethren and those of you who are coming hurry up because i want to pray for salvation now i want to call on my god the one who saved my soul to save your soul also so if you are coming hurry up thank you jesus In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your word. And thank you for these people who have come forward to surrender their lives to you. Daddy, you promised that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. They've come to you now, Father. Please receive them in Jesus' name. They've come to you for salvation, my Father and my God. Please save their souls in Jesus' name. Let your, your blood, that powerful blood, wash away their sins in Jesus' name. Write their names in the book of life. Let them become brand new creatures for you. And let them become members of the family of God. Father, I pray that they will never go back into the world. And from now on, anytime they call on you, Father, please answer them by fire. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, those of you who have come forward, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Mm. 
I, I rejoice with you. Um, from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. The counselors will give you cards, which will fill very quickly, and then you can return it to them before you return to your seat. Now, while that is going on, we're going to watch a little clip about Redeemers University. Uh, this is also their own special month. So I hope the television people are ready. So they roll the clip for us. I think it should be just a few minutes. And God bless you as you watch.
for cutting edge research that has kept hemorrhagic fevers such as Ebola disease, Lassa fever, and monkeypox under control. Our laboratories were the reference point for confirmatory tests for monkeypox during the last monkeypox scare. Our scientists also successfully sequenced the Ebola virus from Sierra Leone and provided the scientific community with so much needed information necessary for drug, vaccine and diagnostic development. Redeemers University and Barry Innovation Switzerland have developed a rapid response kit that can detect Ebola in 15 minutes. Our center of excellence was rated as the best by World Bank in Africa for health issues. Our numerous awards include Cambridge Africa Alborada Research Fund 2017 worth 20 million dollars in reagent and equipment. The Nigeria Academic of Science NAS Gold Medal Prize 2017. Our scientists have trained others in next generation sequencing and bioinformatics analysis from Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Senegal. The covenant is working. Five, our students. Our students have won several awards both locally and internationally. Our graduates are also making waves locally and internationally. We have zero tolerance for students' misconduct. However, our sanctions are not punitive but corrective in nature. These informed the introduction of an initiative known as Recovery of Destiny ROD program in 2012 to afford erring students another opportunity of being able to complete their course of study after necessary sanctions have been applied and such students are made to undergo a transformational program in partnership with our visionary partners Redeemed Christian College of Mission and Christ Against Drug Abuse Ministry, KDAM. A number of other universities are copying this model to adopt the program for implementation as a veritable tool in assisting reward students. Six, awards and accolades. Our departments of Chemical and Biological Sciences won the 2016 and 2017 City Labs International Instrumental Access Award back to back, contested for by highly profiled universities in the world. Our university library, Tekena Tamulu Library, emerged as one of the 10 winners in INAS UNESCO Award. We also won the Award of Excellence as the best private university in southwestern Nigeria. Redeemers University also won the coveted Gold Award category in the maiden edition of the Nigeria Quality Award organized by United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, in November 2017. As a champion in quality management, UNIDO is offering the university the opportunity to host academic programs in quality management systems at both undergraduate and postgraduate levels call to serve at the national level. Following our outstanding performance in the earth sector, the Dimas University was selected to provide the blueprint on the national health for Nigeria when the nation will become the third largest nation in population. 7. The efficacy of the covenant. Redeemers University was born out of covenant. We have evoked this covenant in different situations and the Redeemer has never failed us in any single instance, no single death on our campus. God has made our campus a Goshen, our unique location. We have now become the preferred location for conferences and meetings. God has raised the bar in our favor. The vice chancellors of all the universities had the 2018 annual conference at Redeemers University just about a week ago. This is partly because the Vice Chancellor, Professor Debo Adeyewa, is presently the Chairman of the Committee of Private Universities in the nation and the Chairman of the Association of the Committee of Vice Chancellors, including federal, state, and privately owned universities. God has taken us to the marketplace. 
through our research products, commercial products, and services. Brethren, as we look at how God has increased our marriage so dramatically in few years, we can only say the covenant is working and our Redeemer is strong. Jeremiah 50 verse 34. Well, let's give the Lord a big round of applause for the university, Ron University, the only university in the world that is named after the Lord Jesus Christ, a Redeemer's University. And I'm telling you, that's the best place to send your child if you are looking at not just academic education, the character and everything divine also. Of course, tonight, as usual, at the appropriate time, we'll be anointing those who will be graduating this year um, before we send them into the world. Now, we go to part B of our program. Silencing mockers. The reason why your mockers are in trouble is simply because of your association with God. First John chapter four, verse four. First John chapter four, verse four says. Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You see, the Bible teaches that if you are a true child of God, anyone who touches you is touching God. Anyone who persecutes you is persecuting God. Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 5. Acts 9, verse 1 to 5. Saul of Tarsus was going to Damascus. He was going with the intention of dealing with Christians. He met the Lord on the way. And I have good news for somebody here today. All those who have the intention of persecuting you, they will meet the Lord on the way. Now when he met the Lord on the way and he fell from his horse, a voice spoke to him from heaven. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you? Who am I persecuting? Jesus said, I am Jesus. You are persecuting my children. That means you are persecuting me. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 63, verses 8 and 9. Isaiah 63, verses 8 and 9. That whenever the children of God are afflicted, he shares in the affliction. In all the afflictions, he was afflicted. That's what the Bible says. In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 5, Proverbs 17, verse 5, the Bible says, He who mocks the poor reproaches his maker so whenever whenever someone is mocking you he is actually reproaching god and god will answer the fellow 
As a matter of fact, Psalm 115 from verse 1 to 3, Psalm 115 verse 1 to 3 made it clear. Whenever someone says, where is your God? God will answer and tell him, I am in heaven and I do as I please. So let us look at this case of fruitlessness. Because this month is a very special month for those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And I thank God for the testimonies we have heard. I'm sure those of you who were here last month, you saw the thousands of people who were formerly barren who brought their children. And we have seen more tonight. There will always be people who will want to mock you if by the time you are supposed to bring forth, you have not brought forth. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 1 to 6, 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 1 to 6, we have the case of Anna. The other wife in the house was giving her a hell of a time. What are you doing in my husband's house? Eating our food and not producing children. In Genesis chapter 16, verse 1 to 4, Genesis 16, verse 1 to 4, the Bible tells us that it was even Sarah who gave her maid to her husband. Say, I've not been able to conceive. Go into my maid. Let's get a child through her. The Bible says, as soon as the maid conceived, she began to mock her mistress. But those who are mocking your fruitlessness, and when we have told you before, when we talk about barrenness, we're not just talking about the fruit of the womb, we're also talking about failure in other areas of life. When you make efforts and there's nothing to show for it, they say you are barren. When anybody begins to mock your fruitlessness, they are mocking God. And they are mocking the commander of wombs. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Well, let's just take verse 28. Genesis 1, verse 28. When God made man and woman, after he blessed them, he commanded them, be fruitful. It's a command to the womb of the woman. Produce. And in the name that's above every other name, your womb will obey the commandment of God. He spoke to one woman, commanded one womb. And suddenly, the human race began to multiply. The Bible said by the time we get to Genesis chapter 6 verse 1, Genesis 6 verse 1, he said, men multiplied from one womb. After the flood, and there was only one family saved, God again said to Noah and his family, be fruitful. And as soon as he said that, they began to multiply again. As a matter of fact, the whole world today came from that single family. When they mock you for being barren, they are mocking the one who can close and can open. In Genesis 29, verse 31, Genesis 29, verse 31, the Bible said, when the Almighty God saw that Leah was hated, 
and Rachel was loved, he said, well, let's show you that this is not the way it should be done. He opened the womb of Leah and closed the womb of Rachel. He can close, but he can also open. In Genesis chapter 30, verse 22 to 23, Genesis 30, verse 22 to 23, the Bible said, God remembered Rachel and opened a womb. The Almighty God will remember someone here today. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, Revelation 3, verse 7, that he has the keys of David. And when he opens, no man can shut. When the shots, no man can open. Tonight I'm going to be as brief as possible because I want you to pray with all your heart. I'm going to ask you to pray fire down on your mockers. The story was told of a woman in those days when a woman's menstrual pad were not disposable like we have today. A woman has a special piece of cloth that she uses every month. And there was this young lady just married and discovered that her menstrual pad disappeared. They didn't know it was the mother-in-law who took it away and got it charmed. Shortly after she couldn't find the pad, she found that she could no longer menstruate. So of course she thought, well, maybe I'm pregnant. But she discovered she wasn't pregnant and she wasn't menstruating, young lady. And one day, she came in contact with a man of God and they prayed. And it was in those days when people used lantern for light. A mother-in-law wanted to light a lantern, you know, this kerosene lantern. And somehow, the lantern fell. And there was a little fire. And what got burnt was the menstrual pad that mother-in-law had stolen and used for a child. The following day, the lady began to menstruate. Nine months later, the baby began to arrive. I want you to stand on your feet and lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, anything blocking my way to fruitfulness, send down your fire tonight and burn it up, burn it up, burn it up. Anything blocking my way to fruitfulness, my Father, my God, Send down your fire tonight and burn it up. Anything whatsoever that may be hindering my fruitfulness, send down your fire, Lord, and burn it up. Send down your fire. Send down your fire. Send down your fire. Whatever it is that is blocking my way to fruitfulness, send down your fire and burn it up. You are the consuming fire. Let your fire fall and consume everything standing in my way to fruitfulness. You commanded me to be fruitful. You commanded me to multiply. I want to obey you. 
Whatever is standing between me and fruitfulness, tonight, Lord, send down your fire and just burn it up. Burn it up. Burn it up, Lord. Send down your consuming fire and consume everything, everything standing between me and fruitfulness. Lord God Almighty, send down your fire. And if you have a relation that is not here, pray the prayer for that fellow. You know my, my sister who is considered barren, my relation somewhere is considered barren. Anything standing between my loved ones and fruitfulness, Lord, send down your fire tonight and burn it up. And burn it up. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. But then at times they will say to you that the problem with you, the problem why you have not been fruitful, is something physical, something biological. You know, they say the womb is malfunctioning. Oh, that's why you have miscarriages. They say your womb is incapable. That's why occasionally some people give birth to steal birth. They, they, they have all manners of names. You had one testimony tonight. Someone, they said because of this and that, you can never have a child. The next time you hear that, and please don't misunderstand me, God bless doctors, they're wonderful people, and they speak according to what they know. Science says when conditions are like this, this fellow can never have a child. Next time you hear that, let your reaction be no doctor is my God. It wasn't science that created me, it was God. Amen? And according to Mark chapter 7, verse 37, Mark 7, verse 37, he has done everything well. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 31, Genesis 1 verse 31, when he finished creating everything, he said, behold, they were very good. Psalm 139 verse 14, Psalm 139 verse 14 says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. If you are here and you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb and you have been told that you cannot have a child, lay your hand on your stomach and say it loud and clear, my womb is wonderfully made and my creator does not make mistakes. If there's anything wrong with you biologically, God can correct it. In John chapter 9, verse 1 to 7, John 9, verse 1 to 7, 
in the story of the man who was born blind the bible says jesus spit on the ground made some mud put where the eyes were supposed to be told him to go and wash he washed and came back seeing he went through the process of creation because we were made from the dust of the earth to show that he can recreate even when something is incorrect in acts chapter 3 verse 1 to 8 acts chapter 3 verse 1 to 8 the lame man by the beautiful gate was born lame the day came the almighty god stepped into the situation and corrected everything and when he wants to do it he does it in an instant in john chapter 5 verse 2 to 9 john 5 verse 2 to 9 the bible spoke of a man who had been sick for 38 years in an instant the almighty god changed everything you have had several testimonies and your own will not be different you've had the testimony of the lady for example who was considered barren had gone everywhere until finally a professor of gynecology told her you don't even have an ovary woman you have no ovary how can you ever be pregnant and when the, the, the husband told her this is what the doctor said the woman said well in that case let me just go home and eat and die the husband said no we have had the doctor's report let's go to redemption camp let's come and hear the lord's report i decree tonight that every report contrary to your fruitfulness will be completely wiped out she came it was when we were in the first auditorium we were few there all of us will be maybe about 10,000 at the convention and I was laying hands on the people we called those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb forward and I was laying hands on them and I remember her case especially because I laid hands on her she fell under the anointing and was on the ground for hours since it was at night we thought maybe she was just trying to use the opportunity to sleep we didn't know god was performing an operation by the time she came the following year she came with her baby in the name that's above every other name when you come next year you will come with your baby you've had tonight of a lady who said i attended a program i sat where daddy geo sat uh, you've had several of that you will remember the case of a woman that they told she had no womb she had nothing no nothing reproductive in her and we went ahead a program somewhere and then after we finished some people were struggling to uh, sit on my chair and this woman ignored them and went and knelt down by my wife's chair and prayed a prayer god the woman who sat here doesn't need a womb anymore she doesn't need tubes she doesn't need ovary transfer her own to me ah you've had the testimony before the time she was sharing the testimony she already had two children I want you to stand on your feet and cry to the almighty God tonight and say, Father, whatever is imperfect in my system, correct or replace 
Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. If, if there's anything imperfect in my system, either you correct it or you replace it. I know you are able to do it. Whatever is imperfect in my system, from the top of my head to the sole of my feet, Father, either you correct it or you replace it. Do it tonight, Lord. I know you can do it. You've done it before. You've done it again and again. Do it again tonight. Do it again tonight. Do it again tonight. Whatever is imperfect in my system, anything imperfect in my system, decide that you correct it or you replace it. Lord, I know you can do it. You've done it before. Do it again tonight. Do it for me. Do it for me. Do it for me. Do it for me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If it is something imperfect in me, biologically or physically, whatever it is, Lord, it's either you repair it tonight or you replace it. Just do it for me, Lord. Because you are my creator. I wasn't created by science. I wasn't created by any doctor. You created me. Don't let science mock you. You are the almighty God. Whatever is wrong with me, Lord God Almighty, whatever is imperfect in me, repair or replace. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please, let's be seated. Then they may say, no, 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 your case is not biological. There's nothing wrong with you, physical. And I'm sure many of you have had cases like that. You go to the hospital, they check everything, and they say, oh, you are fine. We cannot see the reason why you shouldn't conceive. Everything is working perfectly. So they say, your case is spiritual. And there is a possibility, you know, like in Exodus chapter 5, verse 1 to 2, Exodus 5, verse 1 to 2, when Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh and said, the Lord said, let my people go, let them go, that they may serve me. Pharaoh said, who is the Lord? I don't know him. And I'm not going to let Israel go. There might be forces holding you in bondage. Spiritual husband. Spiritual wife. Evil in-laws. Or a curse. Or an evil covenant? No, there are spiritual causes for barrenness. But the point is, even these evil forces that may want to stand between you and fruitfulness are merely mocking the Lord of hosts. Because according to Psalm 24, from verse 7 to 10, 
Psalm 24, verse 7 to 10. When the king of glory wants to come in, all doors must lift their heads. Anytime any force mocks God, God responds. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 13 to 30, Daniel 3, verse 13 to 30, Nebuchadnezzar said, Who is that God that can deliver you from my hand? Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered him, It's not between us and you now. It's between you and our God. And God showed him. If there are evil forces trying to hinder you from being fruitful, the Lord of hosts will deal with them tonight. Because Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11, Philippians 2, 9 to 11 says, at the mention of the name of Jesus, all knees must bow. And it doesn't matter how thick the darkness. And I know what I'm talking about. I've had to deal with some of these forces of darkness one on one on many occasions. It doesn't matter how thick the darkness. The word of God says the light shines in darkness and darkness cannot overcome it. Every force of darkness surrounding you will be put to flight tonight in Jesus' name. I can, I can, I can tell you several stories. So I can remind you of several testimonies. Oh, thank you, Father. The Lord said there is someone here and doctors told you specifically that your womb is in a mess. The Lord asked me to tell you I will replace that womb. I mean, you, you remember the story of one of our sisters who was barren and uh, they've done everything until one day somebody called the husband aside and said stop worrying yourself stop wasting your money your wife will never have a child because we have taken her womb away I know science doesn't understand what that one means but Thank you, Father. I, I want to say amen to this even before I tell you. Because the Almighty God said, your number one enemy will receive a visit from my angel tonight. I'm just trying to think of which of the various testimonies we should tell you. But they, they, they call this man aside and said, sorry, we've taken away the womb of your wife. She's never going to have a child. And then they, we had a meeting like this, and the word of God came, that there's someone here, they've said that we'll never have a child, but God said, you're going to have a set of twins. Ah, and the woman said, ah, glory be to God. That must be me. And that will be you too, my daughter. <laughs> and the, 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 the doctors have examined her again and again for years. They've spent all, a lot of money. 
And one day she went to see the doctor and the doctor said, ah, I don't know what's happening, but we are pregnant. Uh, uh, there's a child here. And the lady said to the, world, to the doctor, no, no, not a child. The word of God said a set of twins. Uh, the doctor said, what I can see here is a child. Mm, well, a couple of months later, she went back for the normal something, and the doctor said, I can see two now. <laughs> and then the time came for her to deliver. And because the doctor said, I mean, the husband said, I don't want to take risks. Just take out the children by cesarean operation and then tie the womb. Just two will be enough. So they put the woman to sleep. When she woke up, she saw everybody looking at her as if she's somebody who came from Mass. I said, what's happening? We are my children. They said, don't worry, your children are okay. Uh, let the doctor come. And then the doctor came. He said, what was the problem? The doctor said, I've performed more than 3,000 operations. But this is the first time I have delivered a set of twins and there's no womb. A set of twins and no womb. I'm talking about the Almighty here tonight. I want you to stand on your feet and cry unto the Almighty God. Every evil force standing between me and fruitfulness. Lord of hosts, dismiss them all. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. Every evil force standing between me and fruitfulness. Lord of hosts, dismiss them all. Every one of them. Every one of them. Every one of them. Every evil force that I may be contending with. They say there's nothing wrong with me physically. They say I'm okay naturally, but yet I am barren. Okay. Every evil force that may be responsible for my barrenness. Daddy, deal with it tonight. Deal with it tonight. Every evil force standing between me and fruitfulness. You are the Lord of hosts. Deal with them tonight. Deal with them tonight. Thank you, my Father. Every evil force, in any form whatsoever, might be a curse, might be an evil covenant, might be demons, might be spiritual husbands, spiritual wives, whatever evil force that might be responsible for my lack of fruitfulness, deal with it tonight, Lord. Deal with it tonight. Every evil force standing between me and fruitfulness, Lord of hosts, dismiss them all. Dismiss them all. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Every evil force standing between me and fruitfulness, my Father and my God, dismiss tonight. Dismiss tonight. Dismiss tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated.
And then there are, there are cases that humanly speaking will be considered hopeless. Too old, too late, already past the age of fruitfulness. Anytime you hear anybody say something like that to you, just know that they are mocking your God. Why? Because your God is the Almighty. Psalm 91 verse 1. Psalm 91 verse 1 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Almighty means the one who has all might. He has a question. Your God has a question. In Jeremiah 32 verse 27. Jeremiah 32 verse 27. He said, ah, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? We're not talking about man. We're not talking about medicine, we're not talking about science, we're talking about the Almighty. I say, You are too old. What about Sarah? In Genesis chapter 1, verse 9 to 14, Genesis 1 9 to 14, she was already 90 years old. She should have retired from childbearing for 40 years, if not more. The God spoke a word, and suddenly what was old became new. They may say, your case is too late. Have they forgotten John 11, verse 39 to 44? John 11, 39 to 44. Lazarus had been dead and buried four days. The sister said, too late. Maybe too late for man, not too late for God. Not too late for God. What is dead, he can bring back to life. Ezekiel 37 verse 1 to 10, Ezekiel 37 verse 1 to 10 said clearly, he can bring dry bones back to life. I mean, he asked the prophet, the prophet is supposed to be a man who is very close to God. Ezekiel, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, this is beyond my faith. Even if your case is defying the faith of your pastor, put your trust in God. He is still the Almighty. Too old, too late, impossible situation. The word impossible is not in the dictionary of God. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. I mean, you, some of you, at least the older ones, will remember this young boy, young man rather. He was born with one testicle. And then the parents trying to help him. Thank you, Almighty. Glory be to God. The Lord said, there's someone here tonight, he said, the source of your problem is envy. He said, relax, I will take care of the situation. Thank you, Lord. 
Now this one is for me it's because it's, <laughs> it's completely out of, uh, this one is just coming out of the blues. It has nothing to do with what we are discussing. But the Lord said, there is someone here tonight. He said, any attempt to kill you will backslide, a backfire. Any attempt to kill you will backfire. I hope your enemies can hear that. Um, because backfire means the people who try, we pay with their own lives. And so there was this young man who was born with uh, a testicle. And the parents trying to help him, took him to a herbalist, who in the process of trying to help him, destroy the only one. And so the boy grew up without any testicle at all. Then we had a program at Row Park in Yaba. And somehow the word of God came that God was distributing spare parts and the boy grabbed it. About three or four months later, the boy came to visit me in my office at a Butemeta, and he came with his wife. He says, sir, <laughs> after the word came, two testicles just came out of nowhere. The wife was pregnant. So when he wanted to show me the testicle, I said, don't worry, I can see the sign. <laughs> Let somebody shout hallelujah. I want you to stand on your feet. I want you to pray this prayer with all your heart. I say, Father, you are my hope of glory. All those who say it is too late for me, surprise them. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. You are my hope of glory. All those who say it, my own is too late, that there is no hope for me, surprise them. Surprise them. You are my hope of glory, Lord. Show them that you, out of a hopeless situation you can see bring out glory you are my hope of glory daddy you are my hope of glory you are my hope of glory you are my hope of glory You are my hope of glory. Thank you, Jesus. You are my hope of glory. All those who say it's too late for me, all those who say there's no hope for me, surprise them. Lord, surprise them. Surprise them. Surprise them, because you are my hope of glory. And they say it's too late. They say there's no hope for me. Show them, uh, show them. Show them. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Father. By this time next year, let them see that you are the hope of the hopeless, Lord. Show them. Show them. Show them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Now let's go on a, a broader note and go beyond just fruit of the womb to success in your business, success in your career, success in your academic pursuit. Do so mock your fruitless efforts whether in your business, in your career, in your academic pursuits, etc., they are mocking the great enabler. Because it is true, there are many of us who have worked hard and we have nothing to show for it. So people mock us. The reason why many people who would have gone back home to their villages and become very good farmers and the reason they can't go back is because people will say you've gone for 20 years what have you brought back oh when i when i travel abroad i see people there whoosh i try to cancel them go back home and they find it difficult to take my advice because i've seen doctors medical doctors who left here for america looking for greener pastors and they get there and they tell them we, we, we are not doubting how great your university is but you want to practice medicine here <laughs> you have to do this thing again. You find doctors becoming people who be distributing pizza. Seeing bank managers who left from one nation or the other to go and become night guards. Go home and they say, they will ask. You've gone all these years. What have you brought back? All those who have been mocking your failure, the Almighty God will silence them tonight. In Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 7, Luke 5, verse 1 to 7, Peter fished all night. He was hard working. But the Bible said he caught nothing. He caught nothing. It's possible to work hard and have nothing to show for it. But when the great enabler stepped in, when Jesus moved in, and he had to now call people to come and help him carry the fish. Nobody could mock him anymore. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, Philippians 4 13, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. In Isaiah chapter 40, 
Isaiah chapter 40. Thank you, Father. I don't know who this one is, but the Lord says, the one who lied against you will become your servant. In Isaiah chapter 40, from verse 28 to 31, the Bible says, God gives strength to the weak. And that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. May I decree to somebody that from today onward you will never fail again. Those who say you have walked and walked and there's nothing to show for it, they are forgetting that your father is the owner of all. Psalm 24 verse 1. Psalm 24 verse 1. Be clear. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Haggai chapter 2 verse 8. Haggai chapter 2 verse 8. Says, even silver and gold belongs to me. Those who say you cannot succeed, God will give them a surprise. I've told you this story before. One of my children came to me and said, Daddy, I want to build a house. I said, Wonderful. He said, but please, I want you to keep a secret. Keep a secret. Don't tell my parents until the house is built. I said, fine, I can keep a secret. He built the house. And when the house was ready, he said, send for my parents. Tell them you want them to escort you to somewhere. So I did as I was instructed. We got to the house. We dedicated the house. When we finished dedicating the house, he signaled to me and said, tell my parents that this is their house. Uh, I turned to the parents and I said, well, this is your house. They said, how can it be our house? <laughs> we didn't build a house. Oh, it's built for you by this boy. The parents didn't know what to do, whether to cry for joy or to cry for pain. Because earlier, they had spoken to that boy because he wasn't doing as well as his younger ones academically. They had said to him, you, you can't amount to anything. So the one they say cannot amount to anything now built a house for them. You can understand. I want you to stand on your feet and cry to the Almighty God and say, Father, those who say I will reach the top, silence them. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. All those who said I will not reach the top. In any way whatsoever, silence them, Lord. Silence them. Silence them. Those who say I won't reach the top. Uh. <laughs> Those who said, there's no way for me that I can't make it. Daddy, silence them. Silence them. Silence them. All those who said, I cannot make it in life. My Father, my God, all those who are mocking my destiny, those who have, who have looked at me and they've concluded 
Oh, this is how far you can go. Silence them, Lord. Show them that they are not the Almighty, but you are. Silence them, Lord. Thank you, my daddy. Silence them. Those who said I won't make it, those who said I can never become what you plan for me to be, those who say I can't reach the top, uh, silence them, Lord, because you are the one they are mocking. You are the one that is, they are mocking. Silence them, Lord. If they say I can never have a child, give me a set of trains to silence them. If they say I can never prosper, put me in a situation where I will be able to show them that my almighty God controls the heaven and the earth. If they say my ministry will not prosper, silence them, Lord. You know how to do it by miracles, signs, wonders. Silence them, Lord. Thank you, my Father. All those who want to limit me, who want to say this, how far you can go, no further. Silence them. Silence them, Lord. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. I want to close now. Because we, we still have some things we want to do tonight. I want to close with an appeal to you. Don't mock your maker. Because when you begin to doubt him, you are mocking him. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20, Second Corinthians 1 20 says his promises in Christ are yea and in him, amen. If God has made a promise, he will fulfill it. Even if that promise seems to you like a joke, he will fulfill it. I say he will fulfill it. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 17, 2 Kings 4, verse 8 to 17, Elisha said to the Shunammite woman, Nine months from now, you'll be carrying a baby boy. The Shunammite woman said, man of God, don't deceive me. Don't doubt your God. Please. Don't. Once he has spoken, it is done. Psalm 33, verses 8 and 9. Psalm 33, verses 8 and 9. 
Hey, he said the old life should fear before God. Why? Because he speaks and he's done. I am a living example. And when God speaks, it is done. I was living in a room in motion, you know it. I was praying for a boy's quarter in motion. When he spoke to me, I said, son, don't ask me for a house. I've decided to build you a city. Did it make sense? But when he speaks, it is done. When he speaks, it is done. Don't ever doubt him. I've told you again and again, you know my story. I want to encourage you tonight. Stop doubting God. I told you way back in 1961, I gave a gift to a prophet. Wasn't much, the little I had, I gave to him. We were living in the same house. And he said, Thou said the Lord, one day you'll be going abroad like people go to the market. What's he talking about? In those days, when somebody goes abroad in my village, when the man returns, the whole village will dance to welcome him. At the time he was talking, I've never been to Ikeja. Today. I almost wish that his prophecy was qualified. Don't doubt God. Don't doubt God. The God who said to my father in the Lord, an illiterate, through you I'm going to build a church that will go around the world. And could you say that to somebody who cannot even write his name? Today, the redeemed Christian Church of God is in 197 nations of the world. 197. Because when God speaks, it is done. I was talking to my children, those who are graduating. I said, dream big. Let your dream be so big that it will take only God to fulfill it. And I told them one of my dreams. A dream that I've already shared with some of the pastors here years ago. I told them that a day is coming. When the governor council of this church wants to hold a meeting, they will hold the meeting on the moon. Now I know you will say, that's crazy. Wait and see. What do I say? So on the basis of that, I am saying to those of you who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, get ready. 
swings, triplets, four at a go. And I'm saying to those of you that the world is looking down, saying you can become anybody. <laughs> and we are, when they are talking about people succeeding, do you think they are talking about you? In the name that's above every other name, all those who said so, God will silence them. So we're going to do some things now. Later on tonight, we're going to lay hands on every one of you. Every one of you. But the delaying on of hands is in agreement. Agreement with whatever you believe God for. And please don't believe God for something small tonight. Believe him for something mighty. First, the altar is open. You come and talk to God yourself. All the prayer you are going to pray tonight is just, just for about 10 or 15 minutes because after that we are going to lay hands on you in agreement. You are just going to cry to the Almighty God. Our Father, silence my mocker. Silence my mocker. Silence my mockers. Physically, materially, financially, spiritually, academically, silence my mockers. Almighty God, silence my mockers. Silence my mockers, Lord. Show the world that you are the Almighty. Silence my mockers. Silence my mockers. All those who have written me off. All those who said I won't become many things. Silence my mockers. All those who say it's already too late for me, my Father and my God. Silence my mockers. Silence my mockers, Daddy. Silence my mockers. My Lord and my Savior. Silence my mockers. Silence them, Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Lord of hosts will answer your prayers. He will silence all your mockers. All those who have been mocking your maker will get a surprise tonight. And those who say you will not make it, God will silence them. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord.